All right, uh, welcome to Doozer Shop. Um, thought I'd make an update video. Sorry I haven't posted in a while. Um, it is the day before Thanksgiving, 2020, and uh, I took off of work today. Um, kind of nice. We had uh, um, a little uh, get together with my mom and my dad and my sister and uh, my eight year old niece Alexa. And uh, we went digging wild um, onions, because she went digging wild onions <laughs> outside, because uh, that's, that's what she loves to do. And we had fun, and we rode on my tractor, I let her drive my New Holland, and uh, went in the woods, had a nice, nice time. It was a good day, it wasn't raining. The shop. Welcome to Doozer Shop. Um, had a few things happen since last time. Uh, I got some more cabinets for under my bench, my workbench. Um, my buddy Brad uh, stopped over. Um, he's moving, I believe, to Minnesota. And uh, he, uh, he had some, we did some horse trading on some items. He brought some stuff and I gave him some uh, stuff in return. Um, been busy. Um, working on the shop on my overhangs outside for the roof I had boxed out the overhang for a tree um, and the tree grew so close to the shop I actually I cut it down so I wanted to close the overhang in and make it straight across one piece so I've been cutting wood um, it was about 10 pieces of wood by the time all was said and done to fix the uh, not fix, but you know, finish the overhang off the way where it was uh, not notched out anymore. Um, but I, uh, it's been a learning process with these trees here. Um, I've decided to cut all trees that are within 12 feet of my house or my shop. Um, and any pine tree that is. Uh, let's put it this way, these pine trees are 90, 100 feet tall. If they don't look absolutely perfectly healthy, I'm going to cut them if they can reach the shop when they fall. Because I think you remember last, uh, two winters, two winters ago, I had, you can go back on my videos, uh, had a major pine tree uh, hit the shop, I think it was Christmas Day or New Year's Day, I forget which, and set me back like six months worth of time and effort cleaning it up, repairing the roof. So, uh, yeah, and, and also the aspect of the shade. A lot of my uh, siding is starting to get um, moss, black mold on it, and it's just not drying out. Um, that's kind of where I came up with the 12 feet, um, just to, to, to let light in. Um, and I had, I cut this massive oak tree uh, two weeks ago. It looked kind of, it looked healthy, but it was, it was like leaning towards the shop and it had the, the branches, you know, shading the shop. And if it's leaning towards the shop, even if it's a healthy tree, no, not gonna do it. I'm gonna cut it. So let me take you around with the camera. Um, and let me show you these cool, awesome cabinets I got. Uh, they were throwing them out at work. Um, they kind of match the cabinets I had on the other side because I got like this bench and I got that bench and they're and both in front of the windows and they're kind of uh, you know symmetrical whatever and now I have I have symmetry with my cabinets so let me take you handheld and uh, kind of show you what I got going on okay um, well let me get you a bird's eye view Seeing as I have the ladder right here. Alright, um, so in front of that window and in front of that window is a workbench. So, um, coming down, uh, you can see I have these drawers. These are C-size blueprint drawers. C-size, I believe, is two foot by three foot um, piece of paper. I've got these uh, a while ago from Michelin when I worked up there at Michelin and uh, so anyways um, these over here now 
those used to be some other like little drawers and now I got these. Um, these are from Rickson. They came from Chicago and they're, you know, same thing, C size blueprint drawings, uh, drawers. These are Hamilton brand. It says Hamilton um, on a uh, nameplate there somewhere. I don't know what these are. Uh, I couldn't find a nameplate. It's pretty. These are ball bearing uh, slides and drawers, and so are these are also ball bearing slides and drawers. Okay, so that's really cool, and they're the same dimensions, uh, uh, almost exactly. Now speaking of Hamilton, me swing over on the ladder here. Try not to fall. Now I've got the these cabinets, um, these drawers. Uh, from where I work a while ago and say this uh, just for orientation um, there's the inspection corner uh, of the shop my pigeonhole cabinet you see some grinding wheels in that upper cabinet and uh, there's that Hamilton cabinet and uh, to the left is uh, my radio transmitter cabinet with the microwave on top um, but I said all that to say that these are Hamilton uh, drawers. Now these drawers, they're only like inch and a quarter high, and I think there's 24 of them. Um, it's kind of gooky. I didn't clean these up yet from the grease and everything, um, but those drawer pulls are brass, and it kind of brown color. Um, they got paint all over everything, but those are brass drawer pulls. It should clean up nice when I get around to it. Um, and I really don't have anything in them yet. I need to get some dividers and put end mills and drill bits and uh, stuff in there. So those are Hamilton. Those have been there. Um, yeah. So these are the new ones. Let me kind of get off the ladder and uh, kind of give you a little bit more detail of what I'm working with here. And... Uh, Excuse the mess. Like I said, that's my workbench, uh, that worktop. And you're all familiar with mostly seeing that one. So anyways, uh, these are pretty cool. Um, let me see here. You got uh, SP layouts, okay, so that's B size special layouts, um, A size special layouts. Alright, um, Checkmate special templates. Checkmates are um, sliding hold opens and friction stays and door stops. Uh, SP special layouts. Now we call them SPLO in a, in a number. I think we're up to, um, well, well, up top it says uh, 2,501 and up. I think we're up to 37, uh, probably close to 4,000 as far as drawing numbers go. But, anyways, um, I'm kind of show you. They've got some dividers in it. Uh, it was obviously divided up for B size paper, 11 by 17. Um, and these are steel? No, that's aluminum. And, and you can see that they kind of go under. I don't know if I want to cut that shorter or what, but see, because they, they screw down, um, they stiffen the drawer. Oh, well, hell, I already got stuff in this. Uh, Alrighty, I got some carbide inserts and some lathe uh, tool bits. I want to put um, some tar paper in these. If you look over here, yeah, come on, open up, tug, tug, bug in a rug. Alright, those are some drill bits, and I've got this, uh, you know, this is roof um, tar paper. 30 weight felt paper, asphalt paper, and uh, that seems to work really well. 
If I lift up this drill bit and I'm quiet, you might hear the stiction. Hear that? You kind of. No. You heard that. And, and they stick down. Um, there's no tar on it. But they do stick down. So uh, if you were to not slam it super hard, but if you slam it a little bit hard, they're not going to move. So, so that's cool. And I want to do the same thing here. Some tar paper. I don't know why. I have a rag in there. So whatever. Um, but that's what they are. Pretty cool. Um, I really can't see the ball bearings. Doesn't matter. But you get it. Um, I might be able to take this out and just leave the center, um, possibly. I don't know. Um, ooh, that bounced. Okay. Um, yeah, they're all the same. It doesn't matter. All right, so that's cool. Um, oh, this is kind of neat. This is a a curved power drawbar like would go on a bridge port um, either you know, three bolt mounting, these are allen head screws so the curved drawbar has a special hex I guess it's for wobbly misalignment like a spline kind of hex but um, so this power drawbar um, I don't think it's been used before so my friend Brad and I, we did some horse trading, and that was one of the items. Um, I think those are the hoses from it. It's just quarter-inch tubing hose. Uh, I need to probably go uh, contact Kurt and order the actual draw bar for the bridge port because it's got the special hex. It's more of a spline. And then uh, I can make up an air valve. I'll see what they want for an air valve, but, I mean, that's cake easy um, like I said I got grinding wheels and I took all this apart I had different drawers in here and I had my spray cans um, for spray paint and oil and, and you know kind of so I cleared out some room is it this one yeah so I put all my chemicals in there right um, these seem to fit pretty well um, Anti-seize and Loctite and gasket goop and, and rubber cement for fixing tires and everything. So I didn't have much in this drawer. Um, so that went in there. I'll just show you guys. Um, this is kind of the, uh, the hardware assortment. These little uh, plastic uh, oil containers or whatever. I think these are soy milk or something. Or baby formula. I don't remember. But this is kind of what I use these for, is hardware. Um, what the heck is this one? I forget. Like bushings and screws. And I, uh, I got, oh, these are part of the trade too. Some stainless 3 8 bolts. And I think these are 2 and a quarter, and these are 1 and a quarter uh, long. And I do have more of these containers. But that, that's kind of what I, I use these drawers for. And anything thin, <clears throat> like I said, drill bits or lathe, uh, turning, tooling is going to go in there. <clears throat> um, this is my Loctite and, and toothbrushes that didn't fit because they're taller and dike them. I got some uh, acrylic rod from my buddy Brad and there's more taller. So okay, acrylic rod. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I got a cast iron surface plate. Um, it's been some hammer marks on it, not, just little pecker marks. It's it it's hollow underneath. Trust me on that. Um, it's about a foot by eighteen inches, something like that, and maybe uh, inch and a quarter, no inch and a half thick. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I got a few of these knocking around, and, and you know I got my cast iron inspection plate in the corner. Um, just maybe it's trading fodder for. Uh, you know, something else. Um, what else is going on? I don't know. Um, like I said, I had my uh, 
my drills and screwdriver stuff out working on the uh, the overhead uh, in in the, the shop there. Um, let's see what else. I didn't really. So these cabinets. These used to be over there. I had a whole bunch of these. Um, I don't think there's nothing in there. I got paint brushes, steel wool, and I think caulking gun or something. I don't think there's nothing up top. Um, no, that's empty. Yeah, now this stuff. Okay. <clears throat> Aerosol cans of paint, lubricant, oil, kind of stuff. Um, paint, paint filters. There's a quart can of Pour 15, some gun cleaning oil, spray layout dye, masking tape, funnels, quart of oil. So anything like that, okay. I don't know if I like those. So Okay, a spray can is like eight inches tall, and they fit in this pigeonhole cabinet, right? But I don't know if I want to... <laughs> See, let me step back and get you in focus here. I tried hard not to fill this up. And I mean, light bulbs, I think more light bulbs, end mills, Micrometers, Bezier oiler, clamp on ammeter, I, uh, power supply, battery tester, Dremel Fordham tool, acrylic and plastic, brown and sharp chucks, uh, calipers, you know, transformers, uh, Herrig spin jig that I need a box or suburban spin jig and just VFDs and parts and gauges. I, I don't know how this thing sucked up all this, but my point is for spray paint cans, I'm thinking, let me, I want to stand back here and not trip over nothing. So th this is my wall cabinet. And as you guys have seen previously, I was going to put grinding wheels in it on these hooks because it's a pegboard. And now I'm having second thoughts. I could put shelving in here. It's roughly three foot tall. And if I put uh, two shelves, I could have, you know, the bottom have a shelf. And then maybe, you know, there, there's, there's holes in here, another shelf. So if I have the bottom, one shelf, two shelf, three shelf, three shelves that's a foot tall, um, I could put uh, all my oils and aerosols and, and stuff in there and take the grinding wheels and put them somewhere else. They were in a box, they might go back in a box. I don't know. Um, you've probably seen these. These are only, you know, I just got nothing in these like rod and pieces of pipe whatever I don't know doesn't matter so I might convert this um, into shelving for aerosol spray cans and quartz oil and, and all that um, <clears throat> I got the old inspection area um, Nothing much going on there. Um, huh. So Alexa made made this for me when I was turning 42 for my birthday, and I'm going to be turning 46. I'm 45 now, but boy, how that, you know, no oh well, stinky and fun. Um, I don't know. I don't want this to be too long of a video. Um, working on my welding bench. I got, had a chainsaw taken apart and fixed it and yada yada. Um, a little bit of everything going on in Doozer Shop. I, I gotta throw these out and I gotta put this upstairs and get rid of that belt. 
Um, I took a load of scrap to the scrap yard um, last Saturday and uh, got rid of like eight car batteries and uh, three tires and uh, God, I don't know. Um, let's see. I have not really been doing too much. Um, let me say, uh, I don't know. Nothing went in the parts washer. Uh, I got to find a box for my leather. Um, that's that leather I put on the Gorton. The Mighty 9J. Um, what else? Gotta get the handy back together. It's waiting for a carriage. Um, I, uh, I had the, uh, Van Norman plugged in a while ago, showing my buddy Brad the Rapids. Um, this is a, I think, Polish or Czech made, um, Workhead, uh, motorized workhead for a, a tool cutter grinder. This is Morse Taper 5 with a drawbar. And the belt goes on here and it's a three speed transmission. And um, Something was goofy on the, the bearings and I fixed it. I need to get it all 100% back together and the, the other yellow pieces go. Um, working on the mill, I just cleaned it up. Mm. Nothing much on the oh so yeah let me let me uh let me go through this so let me turn the my uh, my lamp on here all right um so you guys remember I have to grind this gap piece now. From there to there, it it the gap is taller by two and a half thou, two and three quarter thou. Same here, two and a half thou, two and three quarter thou. And in the back, the gap is taller by like I think I measured one and three quarter thou, almost two thou. Um, that that's actually pretty good, and I think. these are pretty good and and like I said the, the inner ones don't matter because they're for the tailstock and the tailstock never comes up this far so I don't know why they made it like this but I'm suspecting that I mean these ways are very good condition they're very smooth they're but I think they're worn down and the gap is not um, and you can kind of see, I'm trying to get the angle right. I stone these down. And I'm trying not to get... There There you can see the light. They've been knackered. Is knackered a technical term? I don't know. But it looks like there's pock marks all over them. It looks like there's a gray streak in the middle and then general pock marks that were low areas that didn't stone you know bright when I ran the uh, the India stone over it very flat India stone <clears throat> so I was going to grind these in a bridge port on the planer somehow going to grind them because uh, but then I got thinking maybe I can rig up an angle plate in a in a compound, probably not this compound, I have a Harding compound, um, and I got T-slots uh, here that I could bolt something to and grind it in place, in, in context, in situation, whatever you guys want to call it. I don't like saying in situation, I like saying in context, grinding it in place. And the way I'm um, thinking about doing so this is like a four inch uh, cup wheel made for like a tool cutter grinder. <clears throat> the RPM limits like 6,000, so I have to keep that in mind. 
6,000 RPM. But <clears throat> if you set this up with some kind of grinder or a spindle at 45 degrees, you could come off the end and still have plenty of room. So you could come off the end. So this, this, this would work. Um, but the thing is, whatever you rig up, I mean, I want to be able to take two tenths at a time. So my down feed has to be very precise. And, you know, if I use an angle plate and a compound and fixturing to, 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 to rig up a grinding spindle, I have to be able to tram it in exactly flat with the existing way, um, you know, which is like 45 degrees, I mean, within a couple tenths, and then take my cut. Now, this thing has to be so rigid that any vibration from the grinding wheel or the grinding spindle, I thought of using an angle grinder and slowing it down, or they do make sanders that are 6,000 RPM. Um, but what I was saying is, my fixturing has to be so rigid, if it vibrates, I'm screwed, right? Because if I'm taking two tenths at a time, with the goal of taking ultimately two thousandths, if, 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 my, my, if this wheel is not rigid enough on my fixturing and my mounting and my, my T-slot and my plate and my compound are not rigid enough and I get some vibration, if I'm trying to take two tenths at a time and I'm vibrating, I mean, that's going to scallop it and cut it deeper and, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to be able to take a, a finished pass. I mean, two tenths, I think, is a finished pass or a tenth or whatever. But this thing must be absolutely rigid. It can't be some hokey, you know, strapped together setup. It's going to have to be, you know, really well thought out. So at first I was thinking about using, I've got spare spindles from the Brown and Sharp 13, okay? So let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is the mighty Brown and Sharp 13. This is the spindle, okay? So this thing is about, I don't know, a foot long, and there's four bolts. I've got spare ones of these. Um, and this, that'd be perfect, but it's, it's a big, hulky, bulk, bulky thing. Um, inch and a quarter bore, and that cup wheel would fit right on there. I mean, I could use this one for crying out loud. It's not a big deal. But then I need to, uh, <clears throat> rig up a motor and a belt, which is, is, again, not the end of the world. But, uh, I don't know if anybody's got any ideas. Leave them in the comments, of course. Oh, um, I found a cup wheel made for an 11,000 RPM angle grinder. And I thought of putting this on an angle grinder and slowing it down with a Variac or some power supply. And then I seen um, Porter Cable makes a sander that's variable speed from 2,000 to 6,000 RPM. And this is rated as 6,000. It's a random orbit sander. Maybe I could take off the random orbit part of the head and then make an adapter. Um, you would hope it would be 5 8 11 thread like most handheld grinders, but who knows. But anyways, I found a cup wheel. And I, I don't know who makes it. It's up in my dad's uh, garage. It's a cup wheel rated for like 11,000 RPM made for a hand grinder for a four and a half inch or five inch angle grinder. And it's a cup wheel and it is fiberglass reinforced. Um, you know, the typical type 27 wheel, I it's not a type 27, but a depressed center wheel is. Um, but it's a cup wheel, it's a dish wheel. Maybe that would work. I know those are resin bonded. Uh, I believe, with the fiberglass um, reinforcing. And these, of course, are vitreous bonded, which is, you know, aluminum oxide uh, 
baked and bonded and porcelain porcelain uh, bonded together, I guess you'd call it. But anyways, um, yeah, if I use a resin bonded cup wheel made for an angle grinder, would it work on here? And I, I should have grabbed it, but I didn't figure I'd be having this video um, going on right now. I don't see why not. I'd have to dress it. And if I dress the the edge, even though it's resin bond, I'm only taking two thou um, complete. So I don't know. Um, and I might be able to take it off the bottom. See, if I take it off the bottom, I could do it on a surface grinder easier. I'd have to to block block these surfaces up and indicate it in. But <laughs> This is not, I mean, it looks bad, but you can't feel it. Those, I guess you call them, some people call them holidays. You can't feel that. I mean, I don't know. It's a mystery what to do. You know, you can't feel it. So maybe I'm maybe I'm better off grinding the bottom, you know, because I could block off this surface and I could block off this surface and indicate the bottom and just take everything off the bottom. I don't know. That might get me to my functional aid. This is like the last thing <clears throat> I need to do, other than uh, go through the tailstock. Found an oil leak um, there. That is not coming from the sight glass. You can't see because it's in the shadow, but it's coming from the shifter levers. The, uh, the O-rings are probably shot. But it looks like it's coming from the sight glass, but it's not. Um, that's an easy fix. I'd have to dump the oil and take the front cover off. Um, not the end of the world. But anyways. So yeah, I'm... I'm, I'm <laughs> I'm super tempted to uh... see at work. We got a huge uh, Chevalier Chevalier uh, surface grinder. I think it's 12 inches wide magnet and three foot long uh, magnet. It's huge, so I could probably block it up on that until I get my Okamoto running. I don't know. Well, um, I guess that's kind of it. Um, put you back up there. Um, thanks for joining me here on Doozer Shop. Um, sorry it wasn't more of an interesting update, but, uh, just doing other stuff. Um, everything's good. Um, just kind of taking things as they come. Um, until next time, this is Doozer Shop.